Hey, today I'd like to talk about headspace. I had a viewer uh, send me a message. He's building a, a Caspian project, kind of like mine, and uh, he had a question about headspace. He said a, a go gauge would not fit inside of his gun. Um, now, when I built my gun, I took it for granted that the drop-in barrel would have the properly sized chamber. And as you know, I've built the gun and I've put like 2,000 rounds through it. Um, I had a no-go gauge, so I knew the chamber was not large. Okay, that, that was a no-brainer. So anyway, he got me uh, to thinking, so I decided to buy a go gauge. Um, the book that I use, the Kunhauser book, says that a pistol should close on a go gauge. So uh, the go gauge is at 898, which is the maximum length for a Sammy cartridge. Um, so I decided to break down, spend the 40 bucks, and uh, get the gauge, and uh, you know see how it fits in my gun. Uh, there's my Caspian again, for those of you who may not have uh, seen it. I've got 2,000 rounds through this gun, if I didn't already say that. And uh, it's been working fine, so, you know, it's going to be curious to see if that gauge is going to close. Uh, the gauge I got is a uh, climber gauge, I guess is what you would, uh, how you would pronounce that. And they're awful pricey for just a little, basically it's just a metal cartridge case. Solid for uh, case dimensions. Okay, this is a go and a no-go gauge that go into your chamber. Um, the no-go gauge is at 9... What is it? 919, I think. I'm drawing a blank now. Yeah. Let's look at it. Yeah. 919 in length. Okay. If the, if the no-go gauge goes in your chamber, it's way too big. Um, the go gauge is at uh, 898 thousandths. Um, that's the maximum length of a SAM, SAAMI, SAMI, um, spec cartridge. So this is supposed to, by my books, fit into the gun and the slide should close on it. So I'm going to see if it does. Um, before I show you that, I checked when I built the gun. I used a loaded round, no primer or powder, as a, uh, you know, just a function check kind of a thing. With it in the barrel, you can see it's just perfectly even with the hood, okay? And there's the go gauge in there, and if the camera will bring it up, there's a few thousandths above. So I'm kind of curious to see if this slide is going to close on this. And then of course with the no-go gauge, it's obvious you can see it there that way too long. Okay, so if you buy a used gun, you're going to need a no-go gauge before you should fire it, really. I already had the no-go gauge. I just bought the uh, go gauge. Well, let's see how it, uh, see if it'll close up. Okay, I put the gun together, as you can see. Um, no springs or nothing, just so I can see if it's going to close up. And uh, I'm going to put the go gauge in there, if I can get it in there. Kind of awkward this way. And it fits so easily before. There we go. Okay, moment of truth. Nope, will not close on the go gauge. Okay, so I would say the chamber of this gun is tight. Okay, now I've put probably 2,000 rounds through this since I built it and it's been running well so that just goes to show you that you just never know anyway I think I may have to ream this out a bit just to give me that little extra bit okay I have an empty casing here just so we can see we know 898 is a go gauge and we're looking at 887 okay for a casing so my gun's running with 887 in there, but it won't close on 898. I've never seen a loaded round that long. But the book says it's supposed to fit, but I've got, you know, like I say, 2,000 rounds. So I think my chamber might be a little tight. So I'll have to ponder what to do about that. Anyway, just a little heads up there, pardon the pun. Quick um, talk about headspace real quick if you're not familiar with the term. <clears throat> the headspace is the size of the chamber, and on the uh, 1911 it's critical because the bottom of the uh, barrel there is kind of cut away so the case isn't completely supported. 
if your chamber is too large, obviously the case is going to be back further towards the breech and you can have the uh, thinner part of the cartridge case exposed to that open area and you can blow that out, you know, causing the, the gases when you fire it to go down into the grip and blow your magazine out or maybe your grips apart, you know, so it's, it's, it's not something you want to mess with if it's too large. Um, if it's too tight, I think the only problems you're going to have is the gun not returning to battery all the time. It's going to be picky about you know, maybe a particular brand of ammunition because the uh, cartridge case lengths vary. You know, obviously the Go gauge is 898 and that's still within spec, although I've never, you know, measuring mine, I've never seen a casing that long. If it's too short, you're going to have reliability issues, and if it's too long, it's just downright dangerous. So uh, the no-go gauge is definitely a, a good one if you're buying a used gun, and the Go gauge, if you're building one, is a, is a pretty good idea, you know, aside from just seeing if it's going to work like I did. So let's see what happens. Okay. okay, no sooner did I say I've never seen a casing that was 898, I lied. Which just went down, I was looking through my brass, I found a piece of uh, PMC brass, measured it, comes in at 898, which is the max length for a Sammy cartridge. I put a bullet in it, no primer, no powder, just to see if it would load into my pistol. Um, as you, uh, I told you, the uh, go gauge did not close. Let's see. And that chambers, maybe I was not being burly enough with the go gauge or maybe something's uh, bending or giving in there. But anyway, it does chamber with an 898, so I'm kind of, I don't know if I should ream it or not. I think I might. I don't know. Anyway, interesting stuff. The learning continues. Okay, I've decided to ream my chamber. And my reamer just came in. There's a picture of it there. If that's showing up good, it's kind of hard to tell in this light, but there it is there. That cost me about $75. Hopefully I'm not going to destroy a $200 barrel with it. Um, here's my Ed Brown barrel. This is the Go Gauge. The Go Gauge actually is just in this light, feeling it, it's just a hair above the hood. So this is definitely a short chamber, even though it's been functioning for me. Anyway, there's my Go Gauge, so I can kind of see how it's going. In my AGI video, he just did it by feel. He didn't actually put it in the slide. So I'm going to want that to go down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to slather this with some oil and see what we got here. With some trepidation, I'm doing this because I don't want to ruin this barrel. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to clean it up here a little bit. I got some chips in there, I think. So I think it's cutting. I'm going to stick my gold gauge back in there. Yeah, I don't know that I took that much off of there. But I do have chips so it is cutting it looks clean too looks like it's cutting clean I think I'm gonna take just a little another snicker off of it I'm gonna get the chips get the chips off of the tool here make sure you don't cut yourself on this sucker because it is sharp Probably way over killing the oil, but like I said, I don't want to destroy this barrel or this tool. I'm using very gentle pressure. Okay.
And there's the go gauge in there now. It's almost flush. So I have taken out a few thousands. There's that 898 PMC casing, which is almost flush in there. Almost. There's the casing that I've been reloading and firing in it which is now apparently just a little bit under just a little bit under rather than uh, totally flush what to do what to do come on take another snicker off of it I don't think I've actually removed that much material I've got some chips here, so I am cutting. Okay, there it is there after three little attempts there. You can still see it's above. But since this gun has been running pretty good, I don't know if I want to go too deep. So I think I'm going to hold here and see if I develop any more problems because I'm real close now. Yeah, I'm going to hold it there. I don't want to ruin this barrel. You know, I wanted this gun to be a carry weapon, so I want it to be totally reliable. Um, but I don't want to ruin it either. Okay, let's take a look at some different uh, barrels and how they look with the go gauge. Here is a Nighthawk Custom. You can see it's just below the hood. This is a Smith & Wesson E-Series, and it is flush with the go gauge. Here's the Ed Brown from my Caspian, just slightly longer. Here's a Wilson Combat. Flush. So, pretty much, go gauge should be flush. Okay, my reaming is done, and it does close on it now. I put the go gauge in there, it does close on it. Um, so that added another uh, $75 for the reamer. $40 for the uh, go gauge and that added in my project but really it's something that I needed to do and uh, I should have picked up on that before and not taking it uh, you know for granted that that uh, drop-in barrel was going to be truly drop-in and ironically that's the stuff that I didn't want to buy because I didn't want to do a gunsmith fit barrel so at least I didn't have to buy the lug cutter for the gunsmith fit barrel so anyway I haven't fired it since I've uh, reamed it out but hopefully it's going to keep working good. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, be safe.